New Yorkers need to stay home to stop the spread of coronavirus. New York City has been the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States. About 56% of all of the new infections in the country. This is not going to be a short deployment. This is going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. When you work during a pandemic and you see on a day-to-day -day basis the effects that it's having on the community and on the patients is uh, very frustrating because there's only so much you can do. Bus operators, train operators, cleaners, track workers, station agents, the ones who are paying the price of us out here. I've been through 9-11, I've been through the hurricane. This is a lot different, this is a lot scarier actually because you don't know where it is, what it is. Every day we go out, it's like New Year's Day over and over again every day. It's so quiet. New York is a city, as they say, that never sleeps. And right now I tell them New York is sleeping. We have to be out here to help out everybody else. You know, you could imagine the city without nobody picking up the garbage. You're working for the city. You feel like you're doing something important. You feel you're part of something. Some people appreciate it, some people don't. The number of coronavirus infections continues to grow in the United States. Poor and minority communities are suffering most. The greatest number of fatalities is in New York City. In one community, you see people being handed masks or nothing at all. In another one, you see people being thrown to the ground for the same infraction, the same violation. Would you like some extra masks? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The parks are the best way for people to still get out and still feel like they have a normal life. I don't even want to picture what life would be like if we had all of our parks shut down. We had some parks last weekend that were more crowded than they should have been. There are too many people not wearing masks. This is a problem in all communities. The mayor finally took our recommendation and is adding other city agencies uh, to the enforcement mechanism. Thank you for enforcing the bus. Oh, yeah, no problem. Of yeah. course, thank you very much. No problem. How's it going, sir? Would you like some extra masks? We're handing them out. No, I have one. I don't like wearing it. OK. I mean. As long as I'm outside, I'm OK. Sometimes they will deny a mask or they don't want to have them, but we have to let them know, like, this is the rule. This is what's going on right now in the world. Hmm. Some people. You know what? I'll take one for later. No mask, no ride. That's simple. And I've actually seen some passengers give a spare mask to people, which that, that, that is the beauty of New York City. In New York, we have to keep the public transit system operating. That's how many essential workers, frontline workers, get to work. I look now, there's about, what, nine, ten people on the bus. Hopefully everyone is negative, not carrying this disease, but we don't know that. You know, it's a little scary. You know, in my depot, we lost two good men. Besides being co-workers, they were personal friends of mine. The death rate for black Americans is higher than for other groups. There's a lot of social and economic things that go into that. The first round of layoffs fell hardest on minority workers. We drive COVID-19 passengers with the positive uh, results. We drive them around from hospitals to clinics, clinics to the houses. My wife, she's pregnant and she's on 21st week. Yes, I do keep social distance. I have a two-bedroom apartment. She lives in a different room, I live in a different room. It is what it is, what can I do? I have to keep my baby safe. I cannot risk my wife and my baby life. In New York City, the hardest hit areas are in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. Latino households across the country are being pummeled by the COVID-19 outbreak. We started seeing a flood of cases that came in to all of the different hospitals almost at the same time. So at my hospital, at least 
several of my colleagues have become sick throughout the city. Uh, I've lost colleagues to COVID as well, uh, both in New York and uh, in New Jersey. There's no question that we've lost people dear to us. The situation with coronavirus is predominantly fever and a lower respiratory infection. I started feeling fever, weakness, body aches. I actually passed out, um, was not responsive. My wife was pounding my chest and you know, my name, my mouth and nose were blue. Sections of some grocery store shelves in parts of the country are going bare as people either prep or hoard, given the virus situation. People need medicine. People need stuff. They they don't want to go out of their way. Go stand in line everywhere else. Sixty-nine. Do I need to be here? I don't need to be here. I want to be here. Like I said, I got, I got a family too. I could be home, with my family, safe, away from everything, and not have to worry about this, but. I'm here. I get a lot of phone calls about, I had a cough yesterday, does that mean I'm going to die? People panicking and they need several months of medications because we, not, we might not have drug supplies in the future. A month ago I had a good paying job and I never thought that I'd be getting in line asking for bread and milk. I immediately did file for unemployment. The claims process rejected me. I have three children, including a special needs child to care for. Uh, my husband is not currently working. Where am I getting money for diapers? Where am I getting money for food? It's running out. So many people struggling, so many people have no money for the rent. The telephone lines are still jammed at the nation's unemployment offices. A moratorium on residential or commercial eviction. We're really lucky to have uh, a sympathetic landlord who says, I, I understand what you're going through, you know, pay me when you can. It doesn't feel good. He also has a family to feed. There's a lot more demand for my services, so you know, I'm out here to help as much as I can and at the same time make as much money as I can. Like, I love the city, but at the same time, it, it has its limits. And uh, I do want to get my, I do want to get out of here eventually. And that's what I'm working towards. This moment, I got a delivery right now. I know the weather is warmer. I know people have been cooped up. I know there's tremendous energy to get out. You have to remain vigilant. Nearly half of U.S. states are starting to slowly reopen their economies. The risk of there being a resurgence is real. Because the weather is getting warmer, you already can notice like a drastic difference in terms of the amount of people walking around. So the more crowds you see hanging out like this, the more you know that it's gonna start up again. Besides getting the economy rolling, get you know, we, we have to try to get back to some sort of normalcy. How do we reopen smart? It's up to you, it's up to us. It is wholly dependent on social action. Being someone who's recovered, you know, medically hopefully means that I won't get it again, which is obviously a pleasant thing. I'm looking forward to the day where everyone has that feeling that they, they're, they're, they don't have to worry about it. There's nothing like New York, nothing. Well, when it gets back to normal, there won't be nothing like New York. the appreciation cannot be understated here. If we're looking at what's gonna happen next, beyond this pandemic, 
uh, the important question to ask is going to be how do we do better next time or how do we do better when the second wave hits and the only way to do better is to change how we do things.